Fly your fair nation. Fly your Thank fair you for nation. tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. Tonight we have a guest in Kingdom Studios with us, so we're going to just get right into it. Y'all already know my usual spiel about introductions and everything, so before I misrepresent or anything, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. So you don't have to use your own name if you want to. Whatever you want to be called, just introduce yourself for the people, please. My name is Carla Remington, and I'm happy to be here with you today, Janae. Ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Where I'm from, children usually don't, you know, question adults. So, <laughs> excuse me, I'm a little bit nervous. No, I'm about to get you're all always in. good. You're always um, good. You can ask me anything. Anything on the table you want to ask. Yeah. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so saying sorry from now. All right. I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> Some of these questions may be redundant because I already know the answers, but for it's people okay. who don't, you know, just bear with me. Okay. I know you're Caribbean, but they Caribbean. probably don't. So where in the Caribbean are you from? I'm actually from Barbados. Barbados, Bajan? Yeah, Bajan, all that cuckoo flying fish, all of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Were you born here or there? No, I was born in Barbados. Okay. Uh-huh. How old were you when you came here? 17. I came here to go to school. Actually, I came to New York to go to school. Okay. Yeah, so I, I came oh, here from right. I came here from New York. Okay. Mm-hmm. How well, so you're are you still in touch with your roots as far as Barbados goes and all yeah, that? Yeah, I just stuff? got back from Barbados last week. I actually went there for five weeks. My mom wasn't doing so hot, so I went there to visit. Okay. Take care of her some. Okay. So do you still have your accent? You just code switching for me? No. I think I have my accent still and I think it comes up more when I'm mad. Okay. <laughs> when I'm upset. <laughs> you can definitely hear the, the the lingo, so Okay. You listen to Soka and all that fun stuff? Soka, reggae. But I like everything else too, I like the American music. But okay. you know, I do like I do like my Caribbean stuff. Okay. Do you go to carnival? Um, I used to go more. Like I I liked it in um Brooklyn, so I used to go to Eastern Parkway a lot. Labor Day, (laughs) you know, Labor Day. (laughs) And somebody sent me some uh, footage from Brooklyn this this last past Carnival, and they were carrying on terrible. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I kind of missed that. It was fun, you know. Everybody danced, everybody, everybody vibe, but everybody, I love that. Did you like play mass or anything, or you just go to a parade and just? I can't dance. What? I've spent more than half of my my years in a club, and I don't dance. But I like to watch people dance, <laughs> you know. Wow. I know, I'm horrible. I just, you know, I never, when I went to a club, I was usually playing shooting pool, just listening to music, but I'm not a dancer. Okay. Uh-huh. Huh. Boring. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you identify as a member of the LGBTQ community? All day, every day. What letter do you identify as? The L. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, are you out? Out and very proud. Does your family know everybody's? Yes. I was outed by my godmother because my first lover was my god sister. <laughs> so, yeah, they, everybody knew from then because my godmother told my parents. How old were you when this happened? 18. Oh, so when you came here? When I was, no, I was still in New York. Okay. Well, yeah, America yeah. when uh-huh. you came. Oh, wow. So how did your family take it? Oh, my mother was like, oh, Carly, I just want to come home. I don't want no problems. I don't want this woman um, sending immigration for you. Come on, come on, oh. come back because it got nasty. Oh, wow. uh, My father was like, you don't need this. You come home, get a good job. You know, you don't need all the this drama. But I decided to stay. Okay, so it wasn't really more about your sexuality. It was more about the situation, the person that you the were. The person I was. Okay, so are they okay with you being a lesbian? Yeah. Okay, have you always known that you were a lesbian? I really didn't. I just knew I was different. Okay. Because I was never, like, I was always a tomboy. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what it was that I was was different but i just knew that i was okay. <laughs> so but um i like and then if i did like guys they were all kind of pretty <laughs> okay. and I, if i thought a guy was attractive he was like you know cute and soft uh, looking and had kind of this curly hair and <laughs> <laughs> kind of effeminate uh, now i know okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> So how does your culture, specifically from your experience, um, react towards or treat members of the LGBTQ community? Not in the best way. You know, when I go there and I take my wife, Judy, you know, we're still conservative. It's very obvious that we're gay. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much a stud, I'm very <laughs> much a femme. You look at us, you don't have to wonder, but I'm not, I don't know. And I think it's just a, it's just a, what's in you as a Caribbean person. I, I don't tend to display a lot of physical um you know affection affection i would just probably even the holding hands and 
kind of like lay off it a little bit, I think. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and it's weird, right? Because as old, I'm 51. I should be beyond that. <laughs> well, fuck you, whatever you think. But it's just something in me, you know? I'm a little, and I'm a little conservative too. Okay. Yeah. So is this just when you go home or like, is this while you're here also? No, no, when I'm home. Okay. Yeah, my parents are still there, you know, and Barbados is a very small island. So I know you, you know me, we know our families, everybody know everybody. So it's like, it's not, you, you can stay hidden here or you mm-hmm. can't do that there. Okay. Yeah. All right. See, because I was going to ask about, you know, bringing people home and how that, yeah. how, where's your wife from? She's actually born right here, Oakland Park. How is she as far as the limitations and PDA and stuff like that when you go home? No, she's, she's fine. Because okay. I mean, but I guess we're older. So it isn't like, I can't believe you didn't hold my hand or you, <laughs> you know, no, she, she's, um, she understands and it doesn't mean take away from how I feel about her. It's just okay. like, you know, out of respect for my parents still being there and everything, I guess something I do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but she's more Caribbean than I am. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody says, ask her if she's from the Caribbean and ask me where I'm from. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you mentioned about being in the clubs, half your life and all this. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with any gay clubs or events in Barbados? Um, a couple of times I've gone home. I've been to private parties, mm-hmm. but there were house parties and you can only, you went there by invitation. Some of the, most of the, most of the clubs, to be honest with you, that are on the tourist strips and stuff uh gay couples go nobody you know because it's more tourist a tourist vibe so it's more accepted like local clubs you'd be more discreet but again there's still gay couples that go in there okay. more the girl couples than the guy they're more accepted than the guys okay yeah of- Sadly, right. <laughs> of course, yeah. sadly. Okay, as far as the subcategories go, you mentioned being a stud. You consider yourself a stud mm-hmm. as far as that. Yeah. How do you feel about labels and things of that nature? Like, you know, femme, stud, top, dom, act. Like, there, the list goes on. I know, it does go on. <laughs> and I'm old school. Mm-hmm. You know? So, like, I, <laughs> Carla, <laughs> would not like another stud. I would not be attracted to another stud. Ain't no way, no how. Ain't happening. I wasn't trying to go here so early, but (laughs) we can go there. Why not? Because that's not my thing. I do. uh, I hear all that. That uh, gay, still a woman, all that. That's not me. I'm old school. I like what I like. Like a girl, like a cute. That's me. (laughs) And a dress, skirt. That's me. I would never like another set of hey bra and we rubbing dicks together. Not me. Not about that fact business. Go oh, on. <laughs> too much, too soon. <laughs> too we soon. just started. <laughs> we just started. We're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. Let me get um, it back together. Okay, so, well, since we're already in that vein, um, how do you feel about, like, gender roles in the lesbian relationships? Like, you feel like, you know, there's male representing should do certain things. And... I, I don't judge anybody. You know, mm-hmm. th- we're all gay. I'm, I'm very open and tolerant of everybody. It's just my personal thing. I've had aggressive women that I, I come up to me in the club and they, hey, blah, blah, all the high five and the hip, blah, blah. and then they'll be like, um, so would you ever go with us? No, bitch, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm flattered, but no, that's not me. I've had that happen several times. Excuse me. Several times, yeah, okay. but it's not my thing. Okay. But I don't judge anybody. I, You know, the labels, I understand that we're in a different time and, and people use different labels to define who they are. Go for it. I'm just an old-fashioned stud from Barbados. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that knows what they like. Okay. Do you prefer male or female pronouns? Like people are addressing you. I've had people address me in that way. And, and a lot of aggressive girls I know get so offended when they go to the Home Depot and they say, can you, you need some help, sir? But if you look a certain way, you can't judge people who who see you that way. You know, if I, I have a low, low haircut, I dress in boy clothes, I don't have any ass, <laughs> you know, I'm straight up and down. People look at me and from behind, I guess I look like any other guy on the street. If I didn't want to look that, I would feminine up my stuff, but that's not who I am. So I, can, I never get mad personally at people who judge you that way. No. Okay. As far as the shortcut, how mm. long have you been sporting this look? Because I've known you for about 10 years now and you've had the same platinum blonde shortcut. Same way. I've been like this since I was, my hair's been blonde since I was uh, 22. Oh. So 29 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Is there specific reason you just like it my hairdresser at the time i used to go to get i had a anita baker haircut and i would go to the hairdresser every week and one day she looked at me and said you know i built my 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 house on clients like you that have to come in here and get each curl done i was like you know what cut my hair off i just 
cut it off. And I, I remember my mom going, oh, God, your hair was so pretty. Why you cut it off? Blah, blah. And now she said, I can't imagine you looking any other way. So. Okay. Yeah. What about the color? The color was um something I just tried. Okay. And uh be different. Nobody wasn't really sporting it back then and I said I liked it and I tried it. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever been attacked verbally or physically because of how you look? Um oh you get the fucking dyke <laughs> ever mm-hmm. so often. And I would be like, Oh your mother chat too much and keep moving. <laughs> but Jesus tell her I, tell the bitch I say hi. <laughs> But no. Oh God, Caribbean people. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it happens. But physically, no, no. Okay. I'm tall. That doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about the word dyke? Bother me. Doesn't bother you no. at all. Uh-uh. Okay. So you don't feel any type of way about um the way it's been more popularized nowadays. Like people are using it more often. Well, lesbians are using it more often now. In... Yeah. Before it was so offensive to, exactly. to lesbians. They're like, oh, don't call me a dyke. That's so harsh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. as it's like you know black people with the i don't use the n-word but people use it as a you know they reclaim the word it is what it is so reclaim the word dyke and keep it moving okay how do you feel about the state of lgbtq compared to when you were younger like how as far as popularity and everything surrounding it a lot of times i think that um the gay younger ones i don't know if they really understand what it is to be gay it's not a style of dress it's a way you are, the way to be. And I think a lot of the younger ones, you know, they don't get it, you know. Because for me, if you're dressed in a certain way, and I have most of my friends are femme. And then I hear, well, no, it's not it's not that type of party. And they don't have that fellowship and sisterhood that I used to have back in the day, being gay. Mm-hmm. But And I think it's more, it more of a fad, where it's a look. That everybody likes, but it's not a way of being. Yeah. But that's not everybody. There's some people who are true to true to our morals and values. They are, but there are a few that are not. Okay. You see this based on like just lived experience, um, or is this like directly tied to being in the club and things of that nature? I think it's just they want to experience it. They they're they're um, turned on by the fantasy of lesbianism or being a gay a gay male or going to the club and being using the lingo, yes, bitch, and you know, carrying mm-hmm. on being flamboyant, but it, it's not truly who they are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Has this lesbian U-Haul myth always been a thing, or is this something you feel like the younger generation entertain? Like you know how they say that lesbians meet and on the first second date they're bringing a U-Haul truck ready to move. That's in? always been with women. Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> right. Yeah. We women are very emotional creatures. Mm-hmm. When we meet somebody, fall in love. It's like okay and it, it went a lot with the the um rate of pay whereas i know it's gonna sound weird but follow me <laughs> men two men get together usually you have those two incomes coming in that are sizable women usually have the amount of money mm. yeah that's always been my thing a lot of women move in together for convenience so why keep up two households when we can just bond together and make one? And that's why a lot of them don't work because it's more of a convenience thing rather than a love thing. That you didn't take the time to get in love with that person. You just said, you know what? You live in Plantation. I live in, in um, Wilton Manor. We always hang in Wilton Manor. So why don't you move into my place? <laughs> Is that, that's how it happens. Yeah. yeah. I, I never looked at it like that. And now I'm looking at like all the relationships that I've seen in my life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. That's one point of you i didn't you know think about okay look at that learn something new today <laughs> you'll look into that <laughs> okay um you said something about rubbing dicks earlier right right, right? right. Yep, okay yep, yep. so <laughs> do you have any feelings specifically about tops being strapped tops no. in quotations old school so i'm all about it okay. but i don't i don't walk around with a strap i mean when i was younger maybe you go to the club once to say okay let some girl rub upon this. Uh, <laughs> don't tell her. She knows what I'm all about. It was cute then, but that's not something I walk around doing every day. No. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh-uh. How do you feel about um, toys and things of that nature outside of just straps? Whatever it, whatever it takes to get the job done. Okay. <laughs> now I'm asking because, you know, you're older. Yeah, and I'm yeah. trying to figure, like, how old were you when you first started using toys and things of that? Uh, probably 24. Yeah. How was that experience? How did, walk me through that. How did that happen? I don't know if it was because, like I said about being gay and it being something that's within you. I've always felt more like a boy than a girl. Anyway, so it was a natural thing for me. It happened almost effortlessly to the point where my girlfriend at the time said, you, this cannot be the first time you did because you're too good. (laughs) (laughs) 
So it's like, I didn't have a problem with it at all. No. Mm-mm. That's the Bayesian in you. Give yeah, me man. that. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Do you ever have penis envy? No. No? You never feel like you wish that you could feel what the strap is feeling? Or I, the toy? I, it's not envy. At one point, I was going to actually make the whole transition, you know, and it was in New York. And my one of my best friends, her name was Sharon. Now she's Jaren. Okay. And we had made a blood pack. We were going to go to LA and do it together. I came home and told my girlfriend, no, this is who I feel I am. And I feel like I should do this. And she's like, if I want to be with a guy, I want to be with a guy. I was like, Sharon, I can't go. <laughs> you know what oh I did? Gosh. And I did do it. But, you know, that's something I, I regretted, you know, but it is what it is. Well, it's never too late. It never, it never, it really isn't too late. It's just like, no biggie now. Okay. I'm secure with who I am. And how long did it take for you to get to that point? To be secure with mm-hmm. me? I think at the age of 30, I stopped caring what people thought. I'm knocking on it. Okay. Yeah, you're right there. You're right there. <laughs> Don't worry about it. At 30, you really go, you know what? This is where I'm, This is where my life is going to go. This is where I'm going to take it. This is who I am. I'm comfortable with that. You move. Okay. 35 is going to be awesome, and 40 <laughs> is going to be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Have you ever dated a man? I dated a guy, yeah, you know, when I was 18. And 18 to 19, I dated about three different guys. And one Jamaican, Jesus. Michael. Anyway, he, was, uh. he was a good guy. One uh, Haitian. Hold on, wait, wait. <laughs> the Jamaican, was he born there or was he born in America? He was born in Jamaica. In uh. Jamaica. And um, an American guy, Colin. And I told all of them I was gay. What? Every last one. And my, Michael from Jamaica was like, hey, Kala, man, you know, I'm mean, I mean, not here still. If you want to bring a friend, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> he already know. <laughs> Colin was devastated and Moses cried like a baby. Most men, it's so weird. I could wear a suit and guys would still try to come on to me. Yeah. A suit with a tie and, and like, you know, yeah. and they would still be like, it's just, you're so, I like your vibe, you're cool. And I'm like, okay, but, you know, me and you like the same thing. <laughs> But we, we can like it together. I just don't know what it is. You know, other girls, are like, I vibe with you. you we like the same sports. We like, you know, oh my you're never miserable. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm like a boy. <laughs> you know, it's funny because me and Twin talked about that before. Yeah. How we'd go out to the club and I'd be in my little bitty shorts or yeah. whatever. And she'd be fitted cap down, baggy, like just like one of the boys. Yeah. And they come and I'm like, yeah. When she first moved, I was like. Yes, they stop bothering me. <laughs> Thank God, we're going out all the time. Yeah, like, yeah. I've, we, to this day, we're just like, what is it? Like, we think a lot of them might be undercover. They, they might want to get, you know, strapped. I've had several guys <laughs> ask, ask me to, like, Sh- penetrate them. Too. Straight guys? Supposedly. Oh. And gay. Well, I, I've, yeah. I've heard, I've had a gay guy ask me that too, but <laughs> I've... Mm. okay yeah questioning (laughs) (laughs) questioning so you ended these relationships by telling them that you're a lesbian or when um when i first moved to new york again i wasn't a practicing lesbian (laughs) and i didn't know what i truly was i my i went to actually live with my god sister and so i was dating for that year up until we actually you know did the nasty (laughs) (laughs) and then that's when i just said you know what that's that's now i know what the missing piece was this is who i am and i was honest with everybody okay he Mm -hmm. just he said he cried like a baby he did he did he thought we were gonna get married i met his haitian mother who liked nobody she liked me wow yeah okay (laughs) (laughs) all right you have children no children no children no no i raised kids with uh, four of my exes so like a combination of seven kids that i'm close to. okay yeah okay how was that as far as being an adult in a child's life being a lesbian did you guys sit down and have like conversation like this is what it is or was it something that the parent the mom right. um already discussed them with them or um all of them knew that their mom's gay yeah okay. i'm trying to think nope my my uh longest relationship um ethan he was young eight yeah eight years old when we started dating and we decided to tell him together and he was like but mom so auntie auntie sandra and auntie rena not gonna let their kids play with me anymore and they were, we were like they're kind of gay too oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> and auntie this and auntie that and auntie dana's not gonna talk to them. 
in this kind of gate too. <laughs> and it was like, oh, wow. you know, so he was like, oh, okay. And then so his mother asked him, well, do you want Carla to leave? Do you want Carla not to be around? And he was like, no, 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 no. Carla's my best friend. <laughs> and that all worked out. Okay. And he's still like, is in my life to this day. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty so awesome. I tried to, you know, I'm very responsible where kids are. I, I don't do the whole, that's one of my pet peeves, the fighting in front of kids and arguing and no. If me and you have words, you're not going to ever be in front of kids, ever. You know, and I, I, I dislike that. I don't like pushing my views onto children either or no. All the girl, the girls that I raise, they bring their boyfriends around. You know, I'm, I'm still protective. I'm like, where are you, what are you doing? Where are you, where are you from? Mm-hmm. Where the, yeah. And they're like, Carla, and they're like, but they love it. You know, okay. so now you just got to treat them, you know, with respect. Okay. Because they can't respect your union if you are being, you know, immature about stuff. And yeah. so I never do that in front of kids. Okay. And you know, from the bars that I've managed and everything, all of those were my kids. Yes, we all call you pops. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> calls me pops. Because, you know, I was a, a way for them to come. They could come into the club and I was their safe place. If their parents kicked them out, they'd come and say, Carl, I don't have somewhere to live. I've had several of the club kids sleep on my couch, you know, until they got it together. You know, so it's like... You try to be responsible so they can see somebody to look look up to. So okay. you have to carry yourself with a little kind of good character. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you say you're married now. Yeah. What were your feelings when marriage started becoming legal state to state? Like when they first started legalizing gay marriage? I was happy because it was something that we had already all always fought for. That, that when I say sometimes the kids don't understand the fight and the struggle, they take it for a joke. That's something that I really, like I've never been married before. So this is, you know, if she tried to leave, I'll cut her throat. But, you know. <laughs> this you know. is being recorded. Oh, There's so. Evidence. All right, right. You're right. You know, you're right. You know. But no, it's, it's to me, vows are important. And if I say that I'm going to, that I'm into you and I promise to always be there for you, it is so. Okay. Did you get married in Florida? Yeah. Okay. Because I know a lot of people, you know, they leave and they go somewhere else and everything, but we got it in Florida. So, yeah. yay. <laughs> um, with all these laws and everything that's being passed lately, um, you know, India, Trinidad, all these mm-hmm. places, decriminalizing um, homosexual mm-hmm. acts. How do you feel about these laws being passed from the stance of, do you feel like the citizens, mm-hmm. do you think it's going to affect the citizens as far as respecting the law, even though it's, you know, it's legal now? No, it's a it's a start, but you know, just because they're they're making it legal doesn't mean that everybody's gonna concur or be or be okay with those laws. So it's gonna be a process, but at least we're heading in the right direction. Okay. Outside of the parties and things that you you know have your hand in, as far as that, mm-hmm. is there anything else that you're doing within the community as far as LGBT goes? I've been involved in um, with different groups where we were trying to get certain um, rights passed, trying to get different prides. From, come around trying to um with the safety of lesbian and gay men you know because i did a lot a lot of stuff with uh outreach programs also i did um i try to help with the misplaced youth that got kicked out mm-hmm. i remember some friends of ours of mine they tried to get get it going where if you actually got kicked out of your homes that we would have somewhere to place you to get yourself together so i was helping with that maybe eight years ago which was something i believed in because it was so prevalent Mm -hmm. i i saw it more from the clubs you know but i try i'm usually there if anybody asks me for help i always try to help and do my part okay how do you feel about the dire need for caribbean lgbtq events it's funny i did um i went back to cloud nine last year and i had gay caribbean Caribbean Fridays. That was you. That was I me. I knew it. Yeah, <laughs> of course. And you know how I feel about Caribbean people. Mm-hmm. And the first party, there was 100 people. The next time it was 60. The next time it was 50. The next time it was 40. So it's like, they told me, Carla McCann, do that DJ. And I was like, okay. So I changed the DJ. Got somebody who was... um she was on 98.1, I believe. So I tried her for a bit. But by then, I think people were so, they were so disillusioned with the DJ I had. Mm-hmm. So, But I was like, see, Caribbean people tell me all the time they want parties. They want parties. I mm-hmm. tried. I did it for two and a half months straight, every Friday. Yeah, because I probably didn't see it till like th- the last few yeah, flyers yeah, yeah. because I, you know, I'm always talking about I want something like that. Because oh, yeah. in Florida, good, yeah. 
it's it's few and far in between if at all i like mean new york yeah. you know it's in abundance yeah so yeah. coming here and i'm like because most of the time when i go party when i go to pride i go to new york because i know pride weekend i yeah. got dance hall i got soul yeah, 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 i got yeah. everything mixed up i don't yeah. have to worry about listening to american music oh. so <laughs> you know what i'm saying so here and i'm just like there's so many caribbean people here why is there you know what i'm saying and there's a lot of gay caribbean people a lot so, you know, when I saw the flyer, I think the next week I was looking for the flyer again and I was just yeah. like, uh, was this a joke? What happened? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I changed it, changed it up and I gave um, somebody else the another another um, young boys okay. could do a straight party because they weren't coming out. The people that came out love the music. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, if it doesn't grow, 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 I'm going to stop and do something else. And okay. it didn't grow. But it was my fault because I was loyal to a DJ that people didn't like. Ah. You know, and I should have just said, you know what? When first week when people were like, love this Carly, you know, I fuck with you, but I can't do that. DJ. I should have just let her go. Okay. Yeah. Was it the music selection that was an issue? You know, you know, when, as you know, as Caribbean people, when we're listening to music, it got a vibe. It got mm-hmm. a flow, mm-hmm. you know, and it was kind of choppy. And people, uh, yeah. no transitions. It just right. jumped from, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And they weren't feeling Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I can understand that because... Mm-hmm. I'm horrible. I talk about DJs all the time when they <laughs> spinning and you playing something from 90s and then you jump. Go- yeah. Okay. And then when we go to the clubs and, or most DJs, they just play the old stuff from 20 years back. Yeah. And they say, okay, we gave you five five uh, reggae music. Okay, that yeah. shit is old. They play like, <laughs> yeah. Or they play the commercial stuff, you know, Sean Paul yeah. and Wayne Wonder. And yeah. Yeah, the same five songs in rotation. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Would yeah. you consider doing one again? Like I would. I would have to make sure that I promote it maybe a month in advance mm-hmm. so that people know about it. And I have enough contacts that I can get a good crowd together to make sure it's a success. But I really would love to because that's my background. I would mm-hmm. love and I hear it all the time. Yeah. You know, so people are always like, Carla, man, do a, a career. I don't mind doing it, but y'all got to support it. <laughs> you know. Have you heard of Team Dutty? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because they, that's all they do as far as I've seen. Like, it's just Caribbean. Okay. I think they started doing it earlier this year or okay. the end of last year. They've been doing parties here and there. Um, They have one this weekend coming up. It's Carnival. It's this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, you know, they're... All throwing in. events yeah i'll send you, you all gotta let me know yeah i will i will by the time this airs the party's gone so no <laughs> point me dropping it <laughs> so <laughs> you're saying but yeah are you participating in any carnival events this weekend i i just go it's like i i used to go more but then it became like oh no it wasn't fun no no Mm-mm. what wh- where the fun go what mm-hmm. what made it not fun i don't know i just don't like people just standing around and uh, not, you know and just on their phones and mm. Leave the fucking phone home and party. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Everybody's so busy, you know, that, you know, it's like, okay, we're not, we're not interacting with no, each other. Yeah. yeah. You talk a lot about like the youth and like, you know, all mm-hmm. that stuff. Do you know of any like current active centers or anything where children, not children, but <laughs> you know, like the gabies as I call them can go to or anything of the sort where they can reach out? I think SunServe is good. Yes. I, I mm-hmm. think that's a great place to start in Wilton Manors. You know, one of the guys over there, Brian, and he's, you know, he tries to do things. I remember one of my, my kids, I had them doing a part-time job there. He yeah. loved it. So I think that's a great, SunServe is right on uh, Wilton Manor Drive. Okay. Are you a religious person? Not really. Not really? I am, I am a firm believer in treat people the way that I want to be treated. Okay. Going to church every Sunday, not me. Mm-hmm. Uh, praying every day. No, it's not. Okay. Were you raised in church? Sure was. Okay. Methodist. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when did you stray away from the church as far as attendance goes? Ooh, as soon as I, probably 12. Whoa. Yeah. Your parents let you not stop? Really? Yeah. Yep. I was going to school, concentrating on education. Sundays was, you know, I think my parents uh, divorced and it was never, just didn't become important anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and they're both religious. They both go to church. Okay. Yeah. But Caribbean is about church. Yeah. On my on my street alone, there are five churches. Oh wow. Where I live, yeah, in Barbados. Wow. That's why I asked because I know Caribbeans like that's one of the things. Go to church, go to school, go to work. Like right. <laughs> so that's why I'm asking. Right. Okay. So I got I got really um. It's just a personal thing because it's like I went. It's like I'm. I feel like. <laughs> 
I shouldn't even say this, but I just feel like they're so phony and judgmental. And, and I just don't have the time. My father would always say, well, you go to church for yourself, not for other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't want to be around those people. I just sit there judging people and, and they're sleeping, sleeping around and doing all that. It just makes me sick to my stomach. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I feel like everyone I've had on the show that I've talked to about why they don't go to church or anything, it's always a similar response as far as the hypocrisy and judgmental and all that stuff. And I'm just like, yikes. Like even people that aren't, you know, LGBT, like yeah. it's the same thing. And it's like you give people this thing and you're like, hey, you should follow this and you should come to church and you should do all these things. But a, a good majority of people who aren't going to church aren't going to church because they don't want to be judged. So it's I, I'm to the point where I can I couldn't give a damn what you think about me. But it's like I remember going to one church in a sunrise and i because i also do retail and i was a retail manager for this one reverend who owned a really beautiful store in um fashion mall Mm -hmm. and i went to the church and a visiting pastor shook my hand and he did one of those feely feely oh, numbers gosh. Me. I he was, tickled your palm uh, he sure Good. did i felt so like I, I well i was almost ready to punch him i was like okay no because i just got this job it's pain like almost six feet let me leave it alone but it's like that's the kind of shit that happens at mm-hmm. church i can't stand you know i can't stand it and my wife is so religious and she's always disgusted with me and with because she wants to go to church a lot and get on the mic get on the mic <laughs> very spiritual and then she's that way too i don't know if she'll admit but she believes in god and, and we pray and i always say to her i pray and you have a faith that's sort of how we do it we don't go to church every sunday i was brought up in was and i probably go in more i said come on carla we're going to go to church okay but the religion is just a practicing of that particular um if i don't do this then i'm not going to heaven I, i'm not caught up okay. but what they say and do i'm just like i come and go to church I am spiritual. Okay. <laughs> Set the record straight. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. All right. Look at you. You're like, yes, okay, fine. <laughs> you quiet now. <laughs> well, yeah, I ain't scared of her. Because <laughs> we've had some real trials in our relationships and in our that that's our resource lean on and just today we both we believe in god we know where our blessings come from oh that's why i said i'm spiritual it's the same thing don't go to church Mm -hmm. don't get caught up don't go to church whether it's the pastor deacon whoever they can't my lifestyle's so wrong what are the things that they're doing that they Mm. have not come out i'm just open with mine Mm -hmm. can't judge me when i know you got some stuff so religion i enjoy singing and I like worshiping. <laughs> Sometimes I just need that. their judgment. Oh, I don't want to go. Okay. And if I ask Carla to go, <laughs> clarify that <laughs> one more time. I do. I do. She's alive. She's absolutely right. <laughs> okay. All right. No, because I, I often, like I said, I've had this conversation with many different people about it, and you know, from different spectrums, people who are spiritual, people who are very like in touch with their religion and faith and all of this, and there's people. Like myself, I'm like, listen, I believe in a higher power and all that good, fun stuff. But same thing, I'm not caught up on church. I know people who are happy to go to church every Sunday or Saturday, whichever. And, you know, they they get some relief or enjoyment from that. Right. So, And I have great respect for them because I'm like, listen, more power to you. Right. I appreciate I admire it. Yeah. Go you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, it's. A beautiful thing regardless of how to you each look their at own. it exactly so and then i come back to that because i usually ask people who are lgbt like as far as with their faith goes have you ever questioned your sexuality because of your faith like no. as far as religion goes absolutely not never ever ever, ever. no not so much as questioned because i'm who i am and i knew different i like women i'm, mm-hmm. I'm different god you made me this way so how could in that sense, that I know this is not something me mm-hmm. I made up. This is just within me. I can't change it. God, if it's your will and I should be doing something different. Same thing I always come back to. God don't make no mistakes. Right. So yeah. there's that. I don't know if I have anything else I want to ask you. Is there anything <laughs> you want to volunteer that I didn't uh, pry out of you? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We, we covered a, a large spectrum of stuff. Um, 
it's with being being gay and Caribbean mm-hmm. is almost like was a, thought of as like an oxymoron for mm-hmm. so long, you know. And I have so much, so many Caribbean brothers and sisters, and I watch a lot of them stay in the closet for fear of retribution. I have so many friends that don't go to their homeland because they're treated um, less than worthy. Um, sometimes, you know, you have to stand for something <laughs> or you fall for everything. Mm-hmm. And I try to live my life a good way. I try to, I'm not, I'm flawed like everybody else. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've never turned away from who I am as a Caribbean woman. I think I'm, I'm I have such a, a love of my culture and I love mm-hmm. who I am. I love how I grew up. I love, to me, that was the best life ever. And when I have friends who go home and they go, how the hell did you ever leave this place? It's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, I think as gay people, we always got to remember where we come from. And I'm proud to say I'm Barbadian. And I try to carry myself in a way that would make my island proud at all times. So that's important to me. Okay, it's funny. You said something um, that I thought about and. In- I think about this too because, like, I love Jamaica. I I was born and raised in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. I listen. I go home every chance I get, and mm-hmm. I'm very, very. And it's one of the things that I talk about when I talk about the show. And I'm like, it's for people who are very in touch with their roots and mm-hmm. are still their LGBT. Like, right. you know, it's people who they don't want to choose one day. Okay, I can go to this event and I can code switch and pretend I'm straight to party yeah. with my people, or yeah. you know attend a caribbean event Mm -hmm. or you know i'm all the way gay but i can't really represent that i'm from this island because Mm -hmm. that island doesn't tolerate homosexuality or whatever the case is Mm -hmm. and i always it it annoys me to no end because my first i don't know if you ever heard of chutney pride in new york Mm -hmm. the first time i went i think they had it probably a couple years before my first um attendance or whatever and I don't know if they think it's funny or what. You know, oh, I see a lot of Jamaican flags in the crowd. I didn't know Jamaicans were gay. And exactly. I roll. Shit. Yes. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? And even like when we go to clubs and stuff, me and Twin, we always talk about, you know, how they always want to play Boom Bye Bye and all that fun stuff when we sit there. Which and we're like, I refuse to have played at any club. Really? I, yeah, it's so <laughs> funny you said that. I remember I told Judy one day, I said, the DJ started playing. I went right to the booth and said, take that shit off. And they were, they were dancing. I said, because you, do you not know what these people are saying? And I can't, it will not be played at any party I'm at. Will not. Oh, wow. Will not. It's, it's crazy you say that because I was watching something. Oh, I can't remember what it was called. But there was a, um, a mini documentary um, yesterday on Facebook about Jamaicans that are LGBT. And they spoke about that song. And apparently when that goes on, that's when all, all the flair comes out. They go extra hard and they're extra with it. And I'm like. Go you. Teach your own. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Usually if that song comes on the club, I just stand up and I look around. I'm like, okay, you're gay. You're gay. You're gay. All these people that are the loudest, I'm always like, mm-hmm. hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, it's annoying. But <laughs> but it's so funny. To be honest with you, if I go to a straight occasion and I'm with my partner, you might get a few glances. Mm-hmm. But it's so funny that a lot of the, which you would think you would get a lot of backlash from the men. In this time and in this age now, it's like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they, they just look at it and look past it. Yeah. Back in my day, mm-hmm. oh, it was, uh, I you just need some dick girl. You know? <laughs> That's they, all you need is a piece still, of hood. And oh all. But, it, but <laughs> let me tell you something. To me, in this day and age, it's much better than mm-hmm. back in my day. No. Yeah, they, they, it's me more acceptable because you see it now. It's all over the media. Every all all of their favorite shows. There's a lesbian mm-hmm. couple or a gay gay male couple. So they're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not so bad. Yeah, <laughs> the designers so and right. dressers and all of it. All of it. Yeah. All the cute stuff that you you love and adore it comes from <laughs> us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know they're appropriating our culture. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's right. It's funny because. I was listening to a show and they were talking about how, you know, they all the terminology that straight people use that are so popular 
that come from gay culture, yeah. like the yes and yeah. like you were saying, and you know, um, what was the other one? Like reading people yeah. and all of that. Shade. Yes, all, <laughs> shade, all of it. And I'm like, yeah, that is that's gay culture. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of that comes from them same gay boys that you want to bad mind and that's you right. know, talk bad about. They're yeah. the same ones that started this and they're the one that's where it came from originally some yeah. straight girl was hanging out with her fruit fly home boys like oh <laughs> that's right you know you, you stole some lingo and that's brought right. it back and it's true. you know it's so true. i just think it's funny because i i see straight guys say something i'm just like mm, hmm. <laughs> okay honey okay <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah. i mean i just want to say thank you for coming it was my absolute You're pleasure amazing. absolute pleasure i love you always so <laughs> Um, it's being here. I, I'm trying to think. There's, there's anything else I want to ask you. I feel like I, we covered so much. Um, we did. Oh, one question. One yeah. question. Did you ever want children of your own? Um, at at the time when I was younger, I it was all about money, so I didn't want any kids. I was like, I don't have time for kids. And if I had a woman that, that I thought was cute, and I found out she had a kid, wasn't happening. Really? I was one of those. Eh, no, I have no time for kids. Wow. Just, you know, arrogant. What's your son? Of course. Oh. Wait. <laughs> Dude, yeah, wait, yeah, wait, y'all, wait. <laughs> y'all are very business minded. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, it was all about money. It was all about if I if I with somebody we're traveling, we got shit to do. Mm-hmm. And not about no car seat and all. Uh-uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the my ex I was with for ten years was the first person I would date with a kid. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's, that's the last one I had for you. That's the last one. <laughs> okay. Is yeah. there anything you want to say to anyone? You know, no, man. Kids? Just stay positive as people. You know, Caribbean people need to realize their power and exercise it. And we want to hear our music, demand our music, or start our own parties with our music. Mm-hmm. You know, we're a big part of this community, and I think sometimes we settle for being in the background. And no more. All right. No more. Well, we're going to wrap this up. Please don't forget to follow us on all the social medias. Um, do you want anybody to follow you on anything? No, man. I got enough people. <laughs> <laughs> you pop I got it. <laughs> <in. laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it's the same thing every other week. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's Pointless Talks. P-O-I-N-T-L-E-S-S-S Talks. You can also find us on the podcast in color directory. Um, subscribe to our podcast on SoundCloud, Apple Music. We're now on Spotify as well. Told y'all, I'm trying to keep adding them platforms. For those that we are on, if you like us, rate us, give us five stars. Leave all the positive feedback, keeping the bad mind feelings them to yourself. And just like every other week, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. Yes. I can read now. Very nice.